Catherine Lucy Bridget Burke. I may have to call you Lucy from now on. <laughs> I'm working with Lucy Burke. <laughs> are we up and running? Jolly good. I know you've got two brothers. Yeah. Uh, are you in the middle? No, I'm the youngest. Oh, OK. Mm. And were you funny when you were a kid? Yeah, I think I was funny, but just in that way that people wanted to be my mate because I was funny. Did you show off to your brothers? Did you want to make them laugh? I really wanted to make them laugh. I remember, actually, the first time I made my brothers laugh, and it was um, John Noakes was doing Blue Peter, and he'd gone to Brazil, and that big statue of Jesus, and he was talking about Jesus and the man that made the statue, and at the end I said the punchline was, and he got his Blue Peter badge. <laughs> and um, and I just remember both my brothers laughing their heads off, and it was the very first time I'd made them laugh. Did they make you laugh? We were massive Morecambe and Wise fans, anyone of our generation, do you know what I mean? And my brother John had glasses, so he was very good at doing the old uh, uh, Eric Morecambe glasses gag. And, um, yeah, he was... I, I remember John being sort of funnier than Barry. Barry was quite serious, but, uh, but John would do his Eric Morecambe impressions and... So we'd watch Morecambe and Wise and, and Saturdays we'd listen to Kenny Everett on the radio, Saturday afternoons, so... And also things like Round the Horn. So we were very sort of... John was, cos he was the eldest, he was in control of what comedy we watched and um, listened to. <laughs> so, uh, so it's all down to him, really. And what about your dad? I don't remember him being funny, no. Was he ever the audience, then, for you guys? Yeah, I remember... I mean, I would make my dad laugh unintentionally, because I would, um, I used to like, Petula Clark had a programme on Saturday nights. And I used to love dancing to Petula Clark. And this used to make my dad laugh quite a lot. But I wasn't intending to make him laugh. I was trying to, you know, be a serious dancer. <laughs> part of the first generation, second generation, whatever they were called. Yeah. So, um... I think I did exactly that same thing, actually. Yeah. Just... Did you do impressions? Yeah. Well, I used to do impressions of my dad. So I couldn't really do that too, Dad. But um, the other time I really made my brothers laugh was, was when my dad came home very worse for wear with the booze one night and, um, and he fell asleep on the chair. And I remember slicking his head on the side and getting a bit of coal from the fire and putting a little tash and I started goose-stepping around him and uh, the boys thought that was highly amusing. So we had sort of half-dead Hitler in the chair and I was probably about six at the time or something, but... Anything to get a giggle, really. Oh, it's a cheap, cheap laugh, really. Really cheap. Yeah, yeah and on it goes. I'm, yeah. I'm still making a career out of that. <laughs> uh, what about what about school, then? I used to look about with my friend Diane. Diane used to put me in a pram, scoop all my hair really tight into a very, very tight bobble hat um, with a little dolly and wheel me up and down the Essex Road and tell everyone I was her baby <laughs> because I've got an extremely high forehead and no eyebrows. And this used to entertain Diane for hours. Um, I didn't find it that thrilling, but, um, but she used to get great fun out of it, so... Would you allow me to do that now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would yeah. like... Would you, in the next few months, allow yeah, me to... Yeah, the big old-fashioned... Yeah. I would like to do that. Spray. When our play is open, yeah. we've got some time during the day. Definitely. All right. Did you have a gang? Yeah, there was a bit of a gang, yeah. And, uh, and I was, like, the funny one in the gang... Um, like the like the more of the clown, I would run around and fall over and you know do anything to get a laugh so that I wouldn't be poked or hit. So because um, when you're the clown in a gang, you're also the one that if the gang get a bit bored with picking on people outside the gang, you're the one that gets picked on. So so I had to put up with a little bit of that. Did you buy mates then by making people laugh? Do you think? I remember giving away toys um, to try and. So, uh, it was something like, uh, I'd give them away and say, and then I'm going to do a show. You know, and then, so I'd give all my toys away, line up doing a show in, like, one of the blocks in our flats, and, uh, like, one kid and a dog would turn up, do you know what I mean? And, uh, and the show was basically just nicking stuff from Malcolm and Wise or Kenny Everett and, you know, just doing that, really. So, so you're performing, then? Yeah, and, and at primary school as well. Very pre the royal family, actually, because we used to... We, uh, I cr invented a family called the Happy Family, um, which was just a family that argued all the time. And we got into a little routine of doing a show in the playground every lunchtime. And this sort of got bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually we had the whole school circled round us. And, and lots of power with that, do you think? Lots of power for half an hour. 
Do you know what I mean? Because it was only during, during the lunch break, you know, that was when I had my power, was when I was doing, writing a new version of The Happy Family. And, um, yeah, but presumably people are thinking, oh, Kath, she's that great girl who does those plays at lunchtime. Don't yeah. you think it bought you a bit of status then? I suppose it might have done, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really think about it. I was just so sort of happy doing it. And Diane was always involved. And, I mean, I was the lead. I gave myself, you know, I think I was mum and dad. And, um, and then everyone else was the kids or... So greedy. Quite greedy. Yeah, of course. Cast yourself up. Absolutely. Most lines. Yeah. Nothing to yeah. there then. What about the teachers then? Did they encourage you to, to be funny? Or was it kind of slapped down? Yeah, no, I was one of those kids that was always told to shut up, always sent... In primary school, you were sent in the corner. They don't do that anymore, I don't think, but told to stand in the corner for an hour. Um, I used to love farting, you see. So I'd fart a lot and, um, and would be able to time farting quite well. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'd sort of store it up and then let rip a, a really good moment. During so, lessons? During lessons, during mass. I mean, <laughs> any opportunity I could get, um, I was constantly farting. There was one teacher at secondary school that encouraged me, and that was a guy called Mr Paul, and he was an English teacher. He was only there for a couple of years, and he did English with us, uh, obviously, because he was an English teacher, and... Um, and he decided to do some improvisation work with us. Nobody had ever... There was never any drama lessons at my secondary school. And for some reason, I don't know how it happened, but then the lesson always ended with me and Mr Paul doing a sketch together, which used to entertain the rest of the girls. And I'd always be some sort of um, highly frustrated secretary. I'd never sort of... Right from a young age, I would never be sort of sexy or anything like that. I'd be some desperate old bag, you know, I think that, that was very much um, uh, Dick Emery influenced, do you know what I mean? Because I used to love his uh, frustrated women, who oh, come here, you know, th those sort of people, so, um, so it used to amuse the rest of the girls. And did you seek the approval of Mr Paul then? Yeah, and, and also then because he told me about Anna Shares, because I never knew about it, which was ridiculous, because I lived in Islington and it was up the road, and, and I remember seeing kids that I knew on the telly, and sort of not really understanding how they got there. And it was because, because of the Anna Share Theatre. So it was Mr Paul that said to me, you should put your name down for this place. And a couple of other girls in the class were like, oh, I go there, yeah, I'll put your name down. And, and then I eventually got in there when I was 16, because it was quite a long waiting list to get in. I mean, were you encouraged to be funny at Anna Share? Was it OK to be funny? Yeah, it was OK to be funny, yeah, because it was just all about improvisation and stuff, so... It's quite scary, you know, and you have to get up and do these things on your own when you imagine there's another person. And I remember the first time I got up, um, instead of just shouting at this other person, which a lot of the kids were doing, so they'd get up and shout, 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 I just got up and listened to this imaginary person and then said about one or two things, was like, oh, all right then. OK. And then sat back down and got a huge cheer. And then that was it. And then Anna was getting me up on my feet all the time. So, But it was because I was scared. Did you know what you were doing then? Did you know that you were being a bit oh, clever? I, I, no, I knew I could see the other person. Do you know what I mean? I knew I was definitely the other person who we didn't see. There was a conversation going on. So, no, I didn't realise that it was a very, very smart thing to do. Mm. But the reaction at the end, I realised, oh, that was... Oh, right, OK. So that's what's acting about. It's about listening. It's not about shouting. It's about listening. Presumably then you knew that there was a career you could possibly go into. Now. Yeah. What I got from Anna's was not so much the comedy, it was that I enjoyed acting. Do you know what I mean? And I enjoyed playing lots of different roles. And it was the money. I mean, the money was, like, bloody amazing, really. When you're 17, 18, and you just get a couple of little bits in films or whatever, it was like, you know, I was working in a bakery. So it was sort of, this is extraordinary. And what I really wanted to do was be a music journalist. So that was sort of, you know, that was my dream, that was my ambition, was just be someone who got paid to go to gigs. Um, so, uh, so then suddenly when I was an actor and I had an equity card... It was like, well, all right, I've, oh, I'm getting money from my work, so I better go and start going to the theatre. I'm paying to go to the theatre. and So it, it, suddenly my interest changed. I mean, I still went to gigs and stuff, but music used to be my life, and then all of a sudden I wasn't going to gigs anymore.